Hello everyone, and welcome to the Environmental Finance Center's demonstration video for how to use a sludge judge, which is also known as a sludge core sampler. Today, we will be assisted by Renee Pace, who is a wastewater operator for the Albuquerque Bernalillo County Water Utility Authority at the Southwest Reclamation Plant. We will begin with a quick overview of what a wastewater clarifier is and what it does. A wastewater clarifier is typically a large circular basin designed to remove the solids from raw primary influent. As wastewater flows into the clarifier, solids heavier than water, which are referred to as sludge, settle at the bottom of the clarifier and lighter material called scum floats to the surface of the clarifier. There's typically a walkway connecting the outside of the clarifier to the middle where the middle components of the clarifier can be accessed. Water flows into an inlet pipe that is located at the center of the clarifier. A circular barrier known as a baffle, is also located in the center of the clarifier that slows down the flow as it enters the clarifier to ensure even distribution of the flow and minimize disturbances. There is also a drive shaft for this clarifier for the scraper and skimmer arms and sometimes manual controls located at the center of the basin above the wastewater surface. The drive shaft controls the skimmer arm which scrapes sludge at the bottom of the clarifier towards the middle where it can be pumped to the sludge handling facility. The skimmer arm is attached to the top of the scraper which moves floating solids to the scum trough or hopper where those solids can be pumped on to solids handling. The clarifier has a double wall weir installed at the edge of the clarifier which prevents solids from leaving the clarifier and allows water to flow under the first weir and over the V-notched outer weir. There's brushes that can be attached to the skimmer arm, which clean the wares as they rotate around the clarifier. The visual characteristics of the clarifier provide insight into how the wastewater plant is operating. Before we demonstrate how to use a sludge judge, we will provide a short overview of the components of a sludge judge. The sludge judge is composed of a long, clear plastic tube, so contents can be visually inspected. A rope is connected to the top of the sludge judge, which allows for it to be lowered down and pulled out of the clarifier. Plastic tubes are often connected by joints to make the sludge judge longer. There are markers on the sludge judge that indicate what the level of the sludge blanket is in the clarifier. Finally, there is a ball valve with a pin attached at the bottom of the sludge judge, which allows water and sludge into the sludge judge as it is lowered into the clarifier. There's a small plastic rod attached to the ball valve that allows for the sludge judge to be cleared. When the pin is pressed against a solid surface, the bottom of the sludge judge tube is once again open, allowing gravity to drain the contents of the sludge judge. Now to start our demonstration, we would like to point out the personal protective equipment our assistant is utilizing today. Renee has put on a hard hat to protect her from any potential falling hazards. Next, she puts on rubber gloves to minimize contact with the many microorganisms or substances that contaminate wastewater and can negatively affect her health. Renee is wearing hard tail boots to protect herself from anything that could be dropped on her feet or kicked. And lastly, she removes any items that hang excessively and can get caught on equipment or machinery. Wastewater facilities are equipped with handrails to provide protection and stability from fall hazards. It is also important to keep walking services clear of any trip hazards. To measure the depth of the sludge blanket, the operator will walk along the walkway above the surface of the clarifier until they are approximately one third of the way away from the edge of the clarifier. They will carefully lift the sludge judge to avoid getting tangled in the device or spilling any leftover wastewater on themselves. The sludge depth should be taken when the skimmer arm is perpendicular to the walkway for most of the representative sample. 
When the skimmer arm is perpendicular to the walkway, the sludge judge should be inserted perpendicularly into the surface of the clarifier and slowly lowered by the attached rope. It should be lowered until the sludge judge touches the bottom of the clarifier. This can be felt when the rope that is being used to lower the sludge judge loses tension and the sludge judge will no longer sink. After the sludge judge has made contact with the bottom of the clarifier, it is time to slowly pull it back out by the rope until the tube can be safely grabbed. The sludge judge should continue to be raised until the depth of the sludge blanket can be read using the indicator markings. After the reading has been noted, the sludge judge should be drained using the pin connected to the ball valve. The pin should be pressed against a solid surface far away from the operator, preferably below the walkway. The operator has successfully measured the sludge blanket depth and is free to log it or report it to the plant supervisory staff. And that concludes our video demonstrating how to use a sludge judge. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to sharing more videos from the Environmental Finance Center Network with you in the future.